Welcome to Fast Draw 101. I'm Howard Darby. Today's topic is Fast Draw Safety, and you're going to learn what this is. Shooters on the line. Shooters set. Welcome to the sport of Fast Draw. I hope you found this video early on in your lessons because we take safety in Fast Draw very seriously. Fast draw is one of the safest sports and we like to keep it that way. Now we have a number of safety rules I'm going to go through today and some safety tips. So hopefully they'll help you along the road learning about the sport of fast draw. Now the most important thing you need to remember is that fast draw is a gun sport. And although we don't use live ammunition, we're only using wax bullets and blanks, they still are very dangerous and you need to follow all normal firearm safety rules. Some of the things I'm going to go through today will be pretty obvious but I need to mention them so that you are aware that all the people in fast draw are going to be concerned with these things when you start going to competitions. One of the most important rules you need to learn when you start fast draw is safe muzzle control and that's from the moment you walk into a competition site to the moment you leave. You can't just pick your gun up out of your gun box when you get there and walk around with it. You have to keep it in your holster. You can go to the area that's a safe handling area, usually a dry fire area or a cleaning area, and that'll be pointed out to you by the contest host. If they don't, go ask. Uh, then when you're on the line, you go up to the line with the gun in the holster. When their line is ready and the line officer gives you the make ready command, you can then take the gun out of the holster, you can try a few dry fires, and then you can load. When you're loading, there's a 170 degree rule. So when you're on the line, it's down range, You'll have people left and right of you probably, they'll have a hand judge behind you. You can take the gun out and you can have it anywhere within 170 degrees. Don't point anywhere near the person behind you. Personally, when I'm loading, I will keep the gun in my left hand. I'll use these shot shell, uh, the, sorry, these snap caps here. I'll use my thumb to rotate the cylinder and I'll just load like that. And and then finish, put it in the holster, you shoot your shots when you have to unload. Again, pointing straight down range, turn the cylinder until the shells are lined up and you can unload that way. The range officer will tell you, hammer down a gun in the holster, you put it in the holster with the hammer down. Then you can walk off the line. Don't ever try to finish loading and then start walking off the line because that's reason to be disqualified in a contest if you start turning around and walking away with a gun in your hand. Now I just described how to load and unload on the line. I just want to point out you should never have the gun loaded with wax bullets, blanks, anything when you're off the line. Only when you've been given the clearance to load on the line should you have anything in the gun. Another rule to be aware of is that no live ammunition is allowed at a competition site. If live ammunition is found, that's reason to be expelled from the contest. We take safety very seriously in fast draw and that's one of the things that we want to follow to make sure no accidents ever happen in this sport. As with most gun sports, eye and ear protection is required. I'll go into detail on that in a minute. Another safety rule is do not look down the barrel. Now that may sound pretty obvious, but I've seen people in major competitions when something hasn't gone right to look down the barrel. Now, we, most of you would probably never do that, but just keep that in mind. Don't look down the barrel. If you ever do drop your gun, maybe on grass, and you're not sure if there's anything in there, go to the cleaning table or the um, safe area take the cylinder out, then you can look down the barrel and check it. But uh, don't ever look down the barrel any other time in fast draw. And as per most gun sports, no alcohol or drugs before or during a fast draw contest. And lastly, no uh, unsafe gun handling situations at the contest. Don't go trying your gun spinning routines. A lot of people do gun spinning in fast draw, myself included. If you ever do get asked to show some gun spinning, and you need to, for example, I've been at a contest and maybe somebody from the media has asked me to show a little bit of fancy gun handling, talk to the gun as uh, the contest host or the range officer, and they'll point you to an area probably where you'll be able to do that. Now glasses are required when shooting fast drop because uh, sometimes there are bounce backs. With the wax bullets, they'll hit a target, hit a backstop, sometimes come right back at you or bullets will come from other targets on an angle and hit you. Um, even with blanks, there's the powder flying around. Sometimes it'll hit a backstop if you're only shooting at a short distance and, and come back at you. So 
Glasses are very important in fast draw. These are shooting glasses. Uh, if you don't wear normal glasses, make sure you get a pair of these. You'll need to wear them. You're not allowed to shoot on the line without some sort of eye protection. If you wear glasses like me, you can use those and be fine with that. In competition, I'll wear this sort of glasses. Um, it protects me on the side because these are small glasses and if there's a lot of people shooting, I might get bullets coming back at strange angles. Um, and this will protect it uh, from the side. Also, when I'm shooting, uh, the side protection acts as a bit of a um, um, buffer and it'll stop me from seeing things going on next to me. And uh, it'll keep my attention looking right down where I want it to be when I'm waiting for that light to come on. So eye protection, a must when you're shooting fast draw. Next, ear protection. When you're shooting blanks, blanks are very loud. They're as loud or louder than a normal gun blast. You definitely need uh, ear protection when you're shooting blanks. With wax bullets, it's highly recommended, and if you're like most competitors, you've been shooting thousands of shots of practice over the years, and even the, the, the less sound that comes from a wax primer is going to give you ear damage over thousands and thousands of shots. So there's a number of different types of ear protection you can use. Uh, just the simple foam ones will give you some protection. Uh, next best level is the... Uh, baffle type of rubber ones that can go in. These are made by Stanley. They work pretty good. They're, uh, they're good for my, my son uses that in competition. If you can get the custom molded ones for years, uh, you can get those at some gun shops. Uh, I know Cabela's and Bass Pro and a lot of other gun shops have kits you can use to make these. They go in and they're specially formed. You, you fit them in your ear um, and you actually make them yourself uh, custom made to your own ear and they work really well. Also there's of course normal um, hearing protection ear muffs. These are good for practice. Uh, my kids often use these in practice, especially these ones here. These are high-end ones that are uh, electronic. They have speakers or uh, microphones on the front and volume controls and you can talk to people as if you're um, just like in a normal room and then when a sound comes like a gunshot it'll shut down the microphone for a split second and you don't hear the sound so there's different levels you can go to if you want it uh, very simply just get uh, the the foam ones higher end go to those uh, gun shops and, and buy a kit to make a custom molded one for your ears these ones are very good fast draws a speed sport as you probably understand and the way we often do that is firing the gun just as it clears the top of the holster now, when you do that, sometimes you're gonna shoot a little too fast and end up shooting in the holster. So we take some precautions against that. This is a Buscadero holster used in World Fast Draw, Ohio Fast Draw, and a few other Fast Draw associations. It's not quite legal for Cowboy Fast Draw, but the deflector shield I'm using on here is usable in pretty much all Fast Draw associations, including Cowboy. What it is, is a piece of steel that started out like this. This tab at the top goes underneath the holster, that's under here. You put a hole in it and then where the leather uh, straps come through or if you have a screw holding on to the backing you can put it in between there with the hole keep it so that it goes to the bottom of the holster and bend it up so that it covers it protects anything going down the bottom of the holster from hitting your leg it deflects it off to the side I have a bend in the back of mine here so that it also deflects stuff a bit downrange so you don't have to worry about hitting the person next to you but the angle on these generally it will take it and bounce it off just a foot or two to you, the right of you. Those are really important for wax bullets. Um, also blanks. Blanks can hit your leg and be like a nice hard slap on your leg. Um, especially if you have the holster turned slightly in, which you really don't want, but sometimes holsters end up pointing into your leg. A blast shield is a very important protection for that sort of thing. Now in addition to the shield on the bottom of the holster, you can also put a blast shield on the inside. This one is a stainless steel. It's formed to be the exact same curvature of the inside of the holster. And it's got a lip at the front to hold on to the front of the holster at the top. If you shoot a little fast, especially with blanks, if you fired right about here near the top, it will just put a hole right through the top because they're so powerful. This will redirect the shots either down the holster and then off the deflector plate at the bottom out to the side or if you hit too close to the top it'll it won't break the top of the holster or rip it apart it'll just uh, deflect it off the top there are a number of different types there's that one there that's removable this one is one that's made it's got a tab at the bottom that holds it in place it's 
lined along the front, along the top, and all the way down on the inside of this holster. This one also has a tab that comes out the bottom. That's this, the silver one here. It goes about two, an inch and a half beyond the bottom of the holster, and then you bend it out to act as your blast shield. The holster on this one also has a deflector shield. That's like this one here, Bob Mernicle holsters. They have sometimes have the safe leg tab, and this can be then bent up. It's got metal lined inside the leather here, and it acts as your deflector shield that's built right into the boot of this type of holster. This is an FD7 used in World Fast Draw or Ohio Fast Draw. Well, I hope that helped with some of the safety aspects of the sport of Fast Draw. We're one of the safest shooting sports there are, and we want to keep it that way. If you have any questions, I'm going to post a link in the description of this YouTube video. You can use it to visit the Facebook Fast Draw group. There's a lot of people there who have been in this sport for a long time, with a lot of knowledge, and they'll answer any questions you ask them about Fast Draw. Other than that, hope to see you at a contest someday. Safe shooting.